Muy buenas tardes, querida audiencia de la Cuarta Conferencia Espacial del Paraguay. Tengo el honor de presentarles al profesor doctor Mike Grunman, quien es profesor en astronáutica, decano fundador del Departamento de Ingeniería Astronáutica de la Universidad del Sur de California, más conocido como de sus siglas en inglés USC, especialista en astronáutica, física espacial, sensores espaciales e instrumentación, misiones espaciales, juguetería, educación espacial, entre otros. Fue co-investigador principal y participó de varias misiones importantes de la NASA. Posee también más de 300 publicaciones académicas y cuatro libros. El hoy nos va a presentar acerca de la maestría en ingeniería espacial en la Universidad del Sur de California. Con ustedes, el profesor doctor Grudman. Hola, señoras y señores. Baita copia. I am Mike Grundman, professor of astronautics at the University of Southern California. First of all, let me thank the organizers of uh, this uh, space conference in Paraguay uh, for inviting me to talk about the space engineering education. In particular, we will talk about a Master of Science degree in astronautical engineering. So I will start with the describing uh, uh, space engineering education in the United States. There I, then I will talk about astronautics at the University of Southern California, USC, a little bit about program stati statistics and distance education, which is very important. And then I will concentrate on the master's degree. So there are a number of publications about the program and they can be downloaded from this website shown here. Just I also would like to introduce myself briefly. I'm a specialist in space science and technology in the various areas. I participate in several NASA space science missions and I served the founding chairman of the Department of Astronautical Engineering at USC in uh, the middle of 2000s and I also served again uh, a few years ago. So the historically, I, in the 1930s, a number of aeronautical engineering departments was formed in the United States to support development of aviation. In late 1950s, when the space age began, these departments became the home for space engineering, for the space engineering education. And many departments changed their names to aerospace engineering departments or departments of aeronautics and astronautics. The number of the departments in the United States continuously grow, aerospace departments, and this growth continues until this day. Today, we have approximately 70 Bachelor of Science degrees in aerospace in the country and more than 60 Master of Science degrees. In the year 2000, we called for establishment of a separate, independent, pure space focused department, Department of Space Engineering or Astronautical Engineering. And the driver was that uh, a competition between uh, pure space engineering departments, aeronautical engineering departments, and traditional aerospace departments would bring the desired mix of educational programs to serve the needs of space industry and the space enterprise. So in 2004, uh, the University of Southern California established such a department and we actually built it upon on a specialization in space engineering that we created in, the, in about 1995. Uh, and this specialization was within the aerospace engineering department. Very quickly, we built up a new department that offers the full set of degrees in astronautical engineering, Bachelor of Science, Master of Science, PhD, and others. The Master of Science component became became uh, the, one of the largest in the country. 
So a few st uh, statistical numbers. Since the in the inception of the department, we awarded more than 160 Bachelor of Science degrees and what is important, uh, more than 650 degrees in on the Master of Science level in astronautical engineering. This is a very large number. In fact, this constitutes about 3 to 3.5% of the number of master's degrees awarded in the United States uh, in the much broader aerospace engineering field. National statistics does not distinguish between programs in aeronautical, astronautical, and aerospace engineering, so they're all together. And uh, the space engineering is actually a smaller part of the large aerospace field. And uh, so we account for approximately three to three and a half percent of the degrees in this very broad field. The program continuously grows in terms of the degrees awarded to our students. So it shows uh, that from 2004, from the inception of the department, we doubled the number of the awarded degrees annually. So this figure also shows uh, that uh, we award degrees to on-campus students studying full-time and f f to students who study uh, part-time and work full-time in space industry. So, and approximately uh, one half of our degrees goes to the on-campus students and one half of the degrees goes to the students studying online. So one half uh, online. Now I want to say that online studies at distance education became the way of life in particularly in the space industry, in aerospace and in defense industries. So the large companies hire and government centers hire Bachelor of Science engineers and they encourage them to study part-time while working full-time to achieve the master's degrees. So in our program we have students uh, who work full-time in all largest American legacy aerospace and defense companies such as Boeing, Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin and others and in many government centers. Now what is important to maintain the quality of the online program so we uh, made sure that the degrees that are earned by our online students and on-campus students are identical. Everything is identical. The requirements, the admission criteria, the coursework, lectures, homework, exams, everything is identical. I also want to say that during this pandemic there was an explosive growth of distant education, online education, and this happened took place across all the disciplines, not only in science and engineering, and because my school of engineering was so heavily present in distance education since 1970s, so uh, we uh, actually handled this emergency very well. We expanded our programs, but distance education after this experience this year with the pandemic would play even a bigger role. So in the past, as I said, we started in 1917 distance education. In the past, we relied on the television, so they shown antennas beaming our classes to geostationary satellites. So today it is internet-based, so you don't rely on this television technology. And the quality of delivering courses and educational products continuously improves. It's actually very high already today. And during this year, with, because of this pandemic and the explosive growth of distance education, the quality of delivering would become even better and better. So now about our master's program. What are the admission requirements? Just first of all, this is the key feature and very important for space engineering education in particular is that space industry, space technology includes exceptionally diverse areas of science and engineering. Uh, it's all flavors of engineering, also physics, mathematics, chemistry, astronomy and others. And because of that, a number of specialists with the varying educational backgrounds work in development and applications and use of space technology. And in order to advance their space-specific education, they need to get advanced degree 
as a Master of Science in Astronautical Engineering. So we specifically designed our program in such a way that we do not require a Bachelor of Science degree in Aerospace Engineering. So engineers with all kind of degrees, uh, uh, undergraduate degrees, Bachelor of Science degrees, and the Bachelor of Science degrees in science could come to our program and we will take them from there. We also require a certain grade point average in the undergraduate studies and GRE's exams. So the coursework consists of nine courses, nine full uh, semester long courses. We have four required courses in the four areas that we consider absolutely essential for anybody who works in space and the first course is the uh, spacecraft system designs basically an overview of the entire space system area and the, and the second course is in space environment because the conditions where satellites operate in space are very different from what we have on the ground it's a vacuum radiation belt solar wind x-rays and other things then spacecraft propulsion which is basically rocketry and orbital mechanics and then the students choose three more core elective courses from a list of our highly specialized space courses and in addition they choose two technical elective courses that could be any graduate course in science and engineering in reality, most of our students take these two elective courses from the list of core electives because this is the list why they came to our program because of the offering of all these specialized space courses. The thesis, the master's thesis, is not required. It is optional. Obviously, uh, the distant students, online students, they cannot participate in hands-on activities. However, our on-campus students, which is one half of our population, they engage in a number of the student uh, projects, particularly building rock, liquid rocket engines and other very interesting things. So the current coursework available to our students is very broad. It's probably, uh, the, I would say, it's an unmatched selection of uh, courses um, in various areas relevant to space technology. So I color coded them. We have a cluster of courses that uh, uh, deal with the space systems. Then there are courses in orbital mechanics or spacecraft dynamics, you would say. It's orbital mechanics and attitude dynamics. There are a cluster of courses in propulsion. And in every cluster, there's an introductory course, for example, spacecraft propulsion. And then there are courses going deeper into this area, liquid rocket propulsion, solid rocket propulsion, advanced spacecraft propulsion, and so on. There are courses on structural dynamics of spacecraft, on the spacecraft subsystems. And then there is a couple areas of that are growing now rapidly. One is the reliability and space safety. And another area is a human space flight, in particular in the United States. It's important because in addition to NASA that historically flew astronauts, today a number of private companies look for flying humans into space. And finally, a little bit about lessons learned. So the first of all, the program should identify the customer and focus on that. Who, who are the our potential students, uh, they are working engineers in industry, government, they are students, uh, upcoming students uh, from the undergraduate studies. We also have to pay attention to feedback from our customer, from industry and government, and from students as well. Uh, the program identity is very important to focus on a clearly defined area of technology and uh, actually prepare Packaging some courses in a cluster that students are advised to take helps students to understand, uh, better understand their educational objectives because very often students have very vague idea what they want to study. And again, as we already emphasized, uh, we have to make sure that we can act, admit and educate students with a very diverse educational background, various areas of engineering and science, and we will take you from there and bring you to into space engineering. 
on in terms of administrative component on the university level administrative independence is very important because when a space engineering is part of a large aerospace department it's open to all kind of the internal university politics and the university politics is known to be vicious and uh, very unpleasant so the program also needs to have a certain critical mass in terms of number of instructors involved and students and also financial soundness is important when a program is not a financial burden for the university then it brings a lot of flexibility and opportunities to experiment and grow now another word about what, another feature of distance education. The distance education provides a unique unbiased quality check of the program. Now think about this. There are practicing engineers who work in the large companies such as Boeing, Lockheed or NASA centers and they interact with their senior colleagues, peers, senior engineers and they choose, these young engineers choose which online program to take to get a master's degree and they have a tremendous choice in the United States so and by the way the distance education doesn't have borders so now you can just take courses in other countries so these engineers have choice and if they choose a certain program that means that brings a specific practical real value educational value to them to advance their professional careers to grow professionally and to become a more uh, more advanced specialist and work in the advanced areas so if a program grows then it's an indication in a competitive environment it is an indication that the program provides something of value at, and, and it is a program of quality so our program as we discussed a few minutes ago had been growing since its inception and actually doubled in size so uh, the, our customer our students do value what they get and finally uh, the world enterprise 420 billion dollars today uh, it's a government and commercial is very diverse in many countries and programs large and small sophisticated and not that sophisticated contribute to advancement and applications of space technology we explore the solar system and reach to the stars and at the same time applications of space technology such as remote sensing communication global positioning system system make differences in lives of people improve efficiency of governance and bring prosperity and the space education space engineering education is a foundation for uh, advancement in this field and the space engineering education will continue to grow ad astra to the stars saludos